We're at, in Limassol Cyprus at the IFX Expo and we're interviewing Andrew Rawlish of One Zero. Uh, Andrew, thanks very much for being interviewed. Um, what can you tell us about the current range of One Zero products, unique selling points, and uh, how you see the market at the moment? So One, One Zero has been uh, in the bridge space for some time now, uh, almost four or five years, as long as that industry's really existed. So we've seen a full evolution of our products as well as some of our competitors, um, and very much a, 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 a nice, kind of settling of the market around functionality specific to MetaTrader 4, but also expanding within our technologies across some more institutional functionality, across multiple providers and asset classes, and really brokers are finding ways to use their back-end infrastructure now to differentiate their offering for clients. And whereas in a competitive landscape four or five years ago, it was all about spreads and spreads and spreads. Um, quality of execution, stability, and the ability to offer a range of markets on top of that infrastructure has really become uh, an important part of our business and I think an important part of the industry in general. Okay, and how do you see the industry as different, say, from 12 or 18 months ago and where do you see it in 18 months' time? I, I think there's some fantastic regulatory improvements that have happened since I was originally exposed to the industry. Uh, you really started to see it start out of a the US and Japan and many of those regulations that were put in place to help protect clients and legitimize the industry around the world have been rubber stamped in jurisdictions like Turkey and ASIC in Australia and whereas global FX was very much a wild west environment for some time mm -hmm. it's gaining legitimacy as an asset class and, and thus garnering the interest of more sophisticated traders uh, more legitimate brokerages and, and I think the uh, quality of technology and transparency in the back end has added a lot to that. Okay, and you know, you're one of the top bridge providers. Um, where do you see the bridge industry going, the, the MetaTrader bridge industry? It's like the power behind the throne of what drives the several hundred MetaTrader providers or the, or the bridges that sit behind them. Where do, you, where do you think bridging is going in the next year? Um, I think what you're going to see is a consolidation of the actual number of providers out there. There have been some late entrants into the bridge space that I think haven't quite caught the wave of a, a handful of providers who have really proven quality execution and solutions around MetaTrader. And whether brokers who invest a lot in internal platforms want to admit it, MetaTrader 4 is, is quite a ubiquitous piece of technology. Uh, I don't have an exact figure, but I, I'd estimate a good majority of retail flow originates or is introduced to a brokerage through MetaTrader 4. And now the bridge is the backbone of these organizations is now a great utility for them to explore new avenues, more asset classes into MetaTrader, other platforms potentially. And seeing these bridge providers evolve, I think, I, I, I think the concept of a bridge as a one-to-one -one conduit is going to change significantly, not necessarily into full-blown ECN and aggregation systems, but flexible order management and routing that allows a broker to off offer bespoke solutions, multiple platforms, multiple liquidity sources, integration into back office and client portal tools, all with the same fundamental execution environment that has been built around a very challenging MetaTrader 4 environment facilitated by auto trading. So the ability to handle a lot of tickets, a lot of volume, mm -hmm. will now translate to other platforms and other liquidity venues utilizing these same few fundamental technologies that have succeeded so well in the MetaTrader space. So it's kind of jumping off in different directions. Yeah, it, I mean the, the, the direction in terms of what the bridge is actually doing is the same and, and I think the providers who have succeeded in that space have learned to understand the nature of the hobbyist retail open community of traders that exists and, mm -hmm. and the challenges in waves of tickets and waves of information that come through the technology which can now be translated into other systems and can now be used to improve the MetaTrader 4 environment even further um, expanding out into MetaTrader 5 and also touching into platforms like Tradable and CTrader where we're seeing a lot more interest from brokers recently looking to differentiate their offering as a broker. Yeah, this definitely seems to be an uptake and you know uh, rather than an unthroning or dethroning but the offering of an alternative platform like CTrader or something like that. Sure, and it doesn't necessarily mean that, 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 that the end is near for any type of technology or platform. I, mm -hmm. I think two or three years from now the landscape will be very much the same but you, you, you'll continue to see uh, a, a technological evolution that allows for brokers to be more flexible in terms of how they access their clients and how they access liquidity. Andrew Rulish of One Zero, thanks very much. No problem, Larry. Thank you.